I am Varun Joshi and welcome to day 6 of our Certified Kubernetes Administrator 2025 course. In today's lesson, we'll be diving into Kubernetes, one of the most powerful orchestration tools in the world of containerization. We will cover what Kubernetes is, why it is so essential and how it fits into the broader picture of containerization with Docker. In our Docker section, we learned that Docker is an excellent tool for containerizing applications. It is great for local development like we saw while we were using Docker desktop and if you were using an Ubuntu VM in cloud, you would have deployed a Docker engine and you would experience the same benefit. In essence, it is great for local development there are certain challenges with docker the first one is auto scaling we deployed this python application this behaved fine because we deployed it and we were the only one who were accessing this application imagine our python application was popular and several users were accessing this application at the same time then running a single container might not have been the best choice in such scenario we need to run multiple python containers and those multiple python containers should increase based on the load on the application so if 100 users are accessing maybe we needed 10 python containers but if the load increased to let's say 200 then we wanted 20 python containers so this is where auto scaling comes into picture but docker doesn't offer auto scaling second point is load balancing if we knew that at around 5 pm my application will experience high load in such scenarios we could manually deploy 10 python containers but how do we load balance across those 10 python containers docker doesn't offer a way to do that hence load balancing is a challenge with docker the next one is self-healing let's say we are running a single python container if this container fails, how do we get around with that? This application will remain failed until and unless we come and redeploy a container or start the stopped container. Hence, self-healing is a challenge. The next one is rolling updates and rollbacks. Let's say we want to upgrade our Python application. Previously, it said hello docker. Now we want to say hello docker, we are here. To do that, we'll first have to stop and remove this container and redeploy a container. So there is no way to update it in such a way that there is no downtime. Similarly, if changes were to go south, we wanted some means to roll back those changes. But Docker in itself doesn't provide a way to do that. How do we get away with these challenges? The answer to that is hello kubernetes in parenthesis i have written k8s so k is the first letter of the word kubernetes and s is the last letter and in between there are eight other letters which is why you would often see kubernetes referred as k8s this is the icon for kubernetes let's familiarize ourselves with the diagram on the left we see that the bigger box represents a kubernetes cluster this kubernetes cluster contains four nodes these four nodes can also be called four hosts these could be four virtual machines or this could be four physical boxes but as we discussed in day one's lecture you would usually see vms that are part of your kubernetes cluster now why kubernetes the first point that you see here is multi host container orchestration we see we have the same python app and that python app is spreaded across four different nodes this helps if let's say node 1 goes down, then our Python app will still be running from node 2, 3 and 4. If this Python container goes down, then we have other containers serving the load. This ensures we have high availability. Second point is 
auto scaling what kubernetes provide us is auto scaling based on load for example if your application is accessed by let's say 100 users and these containers were sufficient to cater that load but if the load increases to 200 users then kubernetes have a feature wherein it will spin up more containers to cater your load that is auto scaling for you then load balancing kubernetes services ensure balanced load distribution if there are several users connecting to your application they won't only be served by one container they will be served by all the containers that are available then self-healing if this container for some reason goes down then we have a mechanism via which this container will be restarted and this can be restarted on this node itself or a different node in the cluster last one is rolling updates and rollbacks so this is a very important feature which can help you update your application with zero downtime and if things go south you can easily roll back the changes so this is the reason why kubernetes is so prevalent and is considered the go-to orchestrator for containers now the textbook definition for kubernetes is kubernetes is an open source container orchestration platform that automates the deployment scaling and management of your containerized application before i let you go there are few other offerings from docker itself which can be used those offerings are called docker compose and docker swarm see these are not required for your kubernetes certification understanding docker swarm or docker compose but this can help you with your interviews and also solidifying your knowledge you can go to the github repo of this lecture and understand the differences between kubernetes docker swarm and docker compose do not get intimidated by technical terms that are used here you would see terms like stateful sets persistent volumes config maps we'll cover all the these things in greater detail in our kubernetes course that's a wrap for this lesson in today's lesson we introduced kubernetes why it is a powerful tool for managing containers and how it differs from docker if you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comment section if you found my lecture useful consider liking sharing and subscribing it will mean a lot to me thank you very much